if you look at my book the the co-editor is my wife oh, really? she's yeah. dr anita she's okay. basically anesthetist ah. but since you asked that question um i should admit that my english is not that good like my wife okay because it's <laughs> <That's> a secret <laughs> it's a secret right it's, it's an open secret right so making, i think uh, you should be very lucky to have your wife associate <laughs> otherwise if wife is not associated she'll find you who are you spending all the time with the book and not with me i think uh, <laughs> no, i no. think that's a very that, interesting uh, that sacrifice uh, is always there it is very important mm -hmm. to achieve uh, something no mm -hmm. it's not easy but well, i feel extremely elated this morning to be seated with none other than uh, professor rajgopal shenai the uh, mentor to a few thousand surgeons and uh, thousands of uh, medical students and a die hard author of uh, clinical method surgery and manipal man surgery and uh, he happened to be in chennai and i just, i just caught him and uh, caught this opportunity uh, welcome sir to our department and it's such a pleasure seeing you thank you thank you very much for the for lovely introduction which you have given thank you and uh, uh, you know the to see an author speak is a very very interesting phenomenon and uh, i'm sure members of learning journal surgery will really enjoy um, i thought i will uh, take you through how your uh, training in surgery basic training and how uh, teaching interested you how we got into teaching and subsequently uh, you know what made you write and you know writing is not an easy thing at all <laughs> and again uh, Uh, you know that the the thing of giving, you know, the our um, society is uh, our culture is of uh, guru sishya parampara. So whatever guru <laughs> knows, he'll give to the sishya. So welcome, sir. So where did you graduate and where did you uh, learn surgery? Uh, my MBBS is from uh, Government Medical College, Bellary, okay. uh, 1977-83. Okay. Uh, those days, uh, even though uh, Bellary was considered as a you know a college which was not popular. Uh, but uh, our uh, teachers were excellent okay it's not just uh, medicine obstetrics gynecology or even for that matter anatomy physiology but surgery was a uh, fascinating mm. there used to be one uh, professor he is no more professor r h n shanai okay he was the dean and surgery head of the department okay. and many others okay they had a tremendous interest in taking bedside clinics right yeah. uh, you know that in those days uh, bedside clinics was ultimate right mm. hardly any investigations and all so from that day only a, a interest developed that uh, i should become a surgeon right during my undergraduate days uh, but who sort of um, was a mentor or who's yeah. inspiration the, the i mentioned dr arachan chennai okay. and one doctor he's a surgeon himself. he's a surgeon ah. surgeon and and dean. and dean oh okay and there was one mh krishnan okay ah. so these are many others were there dr kg nayak and few others mm. now what happened is when i became finally a student in a government medical college bellary for 10 15 minutes i used to take clinics for third semester students really and when i became intern mm. i used to take some sometimes half an hour clinics for final year students right with this background interest in surgery developed and i went to kasturba medical college mangalore okay i got a seat there okay and there again the started the developing inter obviously i i have a surgery post graduate there are some of the great uh, teachers name uh, professor m srinivasan okay you know he's son of dr mahadevan okay who is uh, i think mmc and he has written a book which a very old book but nowadays i think it is not edited mahadevan's textbook of surgery right uh -huh. his son is m srinivasan okay and uh, he was our head of the department when i reported in kmc mangalore then professor c r ballar you might have heard his name he is a very quite popular uh, teacher among the strictly all india now especially more in uh, southern states okay so interest in the teaching developed and interest in the obviously surgical skills one has to acquire so during that 3 years of training in kasturba medical college mangalore uh, obviously it molded me for both ways you know mm. uh, to develop the skills and as well as interest in the teaching right because again credits go to surgical teachers right. who who inspired me also to become a teacher mm. 
So just after my completion of my MS uh, in uh, KMC Bangalore, I joined Manipal. Yeah, sir, when, uh, when we joined MBBS, the common question that is to be asked is, why do you join MBBS? Uh, people say, uh, I want to serve humanity <laughs> and stuff like that. Uh, the thing they don't say is, I want to make money, become rich. Now, uh, very few will say that, you know, I want to become a teacher. <laughs> Now, uh, even now, in this present generation, whenever a surgeon gets trained, they, they want to know which specialty is more paying and which specialty has less work and so on. But what made you think at such an early age that you should be a teacher? Um, uh, one is that uh, I said about inspiration. Right. I got from Government Medical College, Badari, as well as Kasurba Medical College, Mangalore. Hmm. Once I completed my MS, um, it was very difficult to start a private practice mm. because experience, whatever you gain from the three years of period, even in those days, I thought probably is not enough for me to start the practice, mm -hmm. one issue. Right. Second thing is uh, those days, the concepts of uh, MCH, it was there, but, but somehow uh, urology was the only popular uh, uh, popular thing and which somehow I was not interested in urology. Right. Mm. There was a time uh, an opportunity came in Manipal, vacancy was there and uh, with keeping that teaching in the background, I wanted to join a full-time institution from the day one itself. Right. Mm. So my elder brother also happened to work in Manipal in the medicine department. Okay. Yeah. So he said, uh, why not you come and join Manipal? And uh, I joined Manipal with a small, uh, you know, salary. Those days it was uh, 2,000 rupees a salary. So the issue here is, as you rightly asked, it was not the towards the money or something, but uh, money is important. Right. So interest in the teaching made me to join an educational institution as a full-time worker. Right. Having joined Manipal, there now started the further uh, development. Its institution on one side gives an opportunity and again my mentors after joining Manipal to mention a few N. Rajan, you might have heard yes. this name, surgical gastroenterologist right. from uh, Trivandrum. He was the head of the department in Manipal. Okay. After his uh, Kerala tenure, he joined Manipal. Mm -hmm. So he was holding one of the units. Mm -hmm. So like that we had uh, several others senior faculty members who were again dedicated towards the teaching. Why I say this because Kasturba Medical College Manipal started in 1953, mm. one of the oldest private medical colleges. Right. So by the time I joined, there were already faculties who had put a 10 year service, 15 year service that way. So, so I, I, I felt very happy to join the institution which gives full encouragement for teaching. It gives a full encourage for opportunity to grow mm -hmm. and also it helps in uh, your overall uh, manage overall development of the right. individual. Right. So I joined Manipal. Uh, now, um, uh, how did you get this interest? Because uh, being an author, uh, you must have had started taking pictures from the very, very yes. early age. What camera were you using? What, <laughs> what made you? But to see, these days, even if I tell so many of my own, uh, they won't take. So they are not bothered. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's all gold. I think your collection must be enormous. How did you do it? Yeah, Photography. The, again, again, one or two things here that uh, the, the, the idea of writing a book came after somewhere around 93, 94. I had already finished seven years of uh, service. I was associate professor at that time. One convocation was over. After the convocation, one uh, lady student comes to me with her parents and gives me two books. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, sir, you go take this home and then open. Mm -hmm. I said, thank you and came back home, opened. These were my lecture notes which I have dictated in the classroom. Really? Okay. It happened mm -hmm. that when the girl was in third semester, I started taking page one of Bailey and Love onwards. You will put it that way, okay. wound healing. Mm. This continued. Right. When I went to the next promotion, she went to the fourth semester, went to the fifth semester, like that it went on. Right. 
so obviously when they were in final years i also took their eighth semester ninth semester classes to one batch she had a beautiful handwriting mm -hmm. and it so happened she said that uh, sir uh, these were this is your notes mm -hmm. which i have taken down with my own handwriting mm -hmm. her handwriting is so good mm -hmm. and she looking at her handwriting her classmate another fellow asked i want one copy that time xerox had just come right and xerox material they used to charge 1 rupee per page, per page. One person has paid two hundred and seventy-five rupees and got the Xerox of that her notes. Right. And the Xerox man, he thought something, and he made twenty-five copies of this book. Okay. Xerox book in which there is no mention about any name, nothing. Right. And he started selling it for three hundred rupees or so. Okay. Yeah. So this girl comes and tells me, Sir, high time you start writing. Right. Mm -hmm. now adding on to this is how it started with the idea of writing mm. but see what you write in the class my way of uh, teaching is a uh, slightly different from uh, what conventional uh, uh, teaching to give a simple example case of carcinoma of the breast you read the bailey and law any textbook for that matter you have that usual etiology pathology clinical features investigation it goes on like that what i have done in my uh, in my my book is the history taking is uh, in the form of i have written as etiology in addition to the history taking i have added clinical features are nothing but inspection palpation right signs and symptoms symptoms i have put it in the other way signs i have put in the form of inspection palpation so a candidate who takes the book and reads carcinoma of the breast he doesn't have to refer another clinical book he has got the inspection methods there palpation methods there diagnosis there and how to differentiate everything is there so so the inspiration is from from that bo book xerox book okay okay then the question which you asked about the photographs being a good institution we had a audio visual department since 19 uh, early okay. 70s in our uh, institution right i never had a camera till uh, till i think 1996 or 98 really yeah all the pictures of very old pictures are there okay. some of them are taken by the audio visual department in the form of those slides right and the slides were converted into photos okay so they used to have that slide uh, you know that uh, folders right we used to present in the conferences yeah. with the help of folder mm -hmm. and uh, and my mentor professor u santosh pai he used to always tell me during the rounds you you take photograph take this take this you write a book you write a book he used to openly encourage me i used to say yes, sir no sir you write a book this is the <laughs> usual thing happens okay but when this book came by the time we had some already some photographs added i added the photographs in the form of the the uh, take a xerox of the photograph and added this this two books what i mentioned to you started circulating widely in karnataka okay xerox material xerox material okay yeah. in that uh, without your name no name is there <laughs> then that uh, one person comes and tells me sir your uh, xerox books are in uh, ms ramaya medical college in uh, davangere medical college in mysore medical college then he gave me a suggestion sir what we'll do is a cyclostyling you have heard of the cyclostyling yes. because so that i will now add something so that that print, the person who has xerox that uh, shopkeeper mm. will not be able to do this other book that's right and cyclostyling works out to be cheaper right so then came on the cyclo styling and this cyclo style book was taken by my present publisher mm -hmm. cbs publishers okay. new delhi right so they felt uh, what is this notes is running uh, so much uh, in uh, circulation but the our other uh, books are not going okay so they somehow traced me uh -huh. landed in my house okay and uh, that is the first time I thought it seriously somewhere around 96 97 okay added new few colored photographs mm -hmm. and in the ASI conference in Madurai 
mm-hmm. year 2000 okay that is 1999 uh, come summer and december end they brought out what is called a millennium edition first edition of the book okay okay so that's the starting of the book oh, wonderful so what uh, you are working after hospital hours uh, to at home oh. and even totally dedicated <laughs> hours together uh, right. you is. cannot uh, do this uh, book work in your regular uh, hours mm. number 1 mm. it needs a tremendous uh, time only after the working hours okay. that too you feel tired right so the only best time is to early morning early morning the best time is uh, between uh, say 5 5 5 say 5 to 7 okay two hours okay every day uh-huh. two hours in the morning not that we are not done during uh, other hours that that is the best time you can concentrate in your uh, activities mm. whole day working in the hospital when you come back by 5:36 you get uh, you know tired now uh, you started uh, working on your book in a nira where uh, computers are not very not common easy. references is not easy there's no google there's no pubmed and how difficult was it where will you get you have to spend time a lot of time in the library for references index medicals big big volumes what is your hard work uh, how do you describe it um can i tell very honestly my first edition it had just come out of my mouth really <laughs> in other words that shows that during the post graduation i have read many books mm. which is again the advice to the modern post graduates they are not reading i have read main ghosh operative surgery book mm-hmm. i have read golligers i have read monograms on the thyroid and breast mm-hmm. i can't recollect those monograms mm. in addition to bailey and love and even the shabiston and all the recent advances which are available that time so most of the information which i passed on in the book the initially was like a, how you take an mbbs class okay you you take an mbbs class you you spend about uh, one hour before the class you prepare slides and uh, you you projected those days slides were not there yeah. it's only blackboard true so it was in the form of uh, a quick quick revision for a mbbs student quick examination uh, methods and that is the idea in which the first edition comes no doubt rightly what you mentioned here and there chapters like tetanus gas gangrene pathology pharmacology a few things i have referred books mm-hmm. not that we are not referred okay because the methodology of teaching in the early part of that uh, 85 86 and uh, present there is lot of difference yeah. i think we just discussed about this uh, cancer and uh, uh, staging and other things yeah. so probably it was a simple book to start with okay. the second part of what you asked was true now mm-hmm. as the edition grew the requirements mm-hmm. become more mm-hmm. students who send the feedback mm-hmm. started telling that uh, this is not enough <coughs> this information is not enough please add this that's why i put in the book it's a shaped by the students mm. the front page it is there really mm. over a period of time the what edition now it is seen in the fifth edition so so of late in the last uh, 10 12 years i need to refer many many books now right mm. that is the thing okay it has initial to start with it just came out we can put it that way and uh, initial days you were typing it out on a typewriter or how was the or <coughs> Uh, some you are dictating somebody's i was dictating someone see uh, what happened was i told about those two books no mm-hmm. these two books were taken by my publisher mm-hmm. they had the person who was typed mm-hmm. and he used to type it and mm-hmm. send to me mm-hmm. and by the time that uh, around the 99 98 period came the computers came right so early program was uh, i think venturi format venture format or something okay, like that okay. the book was done in that format okay mm-hmm. so later they send the text material in the form of word i have to correct it each edition each edition has seen so many changes uh, as per the requirements but i believed always in the t- making the thing simple for the students a, a mba student goes through a very tough time in the in the examination right so the the advantage of the book is that its simplicity the photographs one look at the photographs will give lot of information 
So that is how uh, the, the innovative things in the book is the few things like the photographs are original. We have the full, uh, the, 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 there is the advantage of the Indian authors. Yeah. Second thing is the what is important has been highlighted. Right. It, I have broken some of the traditional uh, rules of the book like I made some bold, made some in between that suddenly you find something bold. What I felt important, what is important as an examiner, I know what question to ask. I made it bold. But that's not a convention in publishing. No, it is not, a, it is not conventional. If you look at the book, you find so many small, small key boxes. Okay. Right. Which are, uh, we have put as key boxes. Okay. Yeah. So many mnemonics are there. Right. I have in, introduced the pearls of wisdom. Right. Like every one of us have uh, some kind of wisdom. Really? You do, you know, you open as appendicitis and uh, appendix is normal, you are removed and uh, later uh, something else comes out. The <laughs> typical uh, <laughs> surgeon needs a wisdom. <laughs> right. It's a acute pancreatitis and yeah. uh, you know, right leg for some pain, like that. So, these are some of the few uh, I innovative things which helped the uh, book to grow. Sir, uh, the language, English language is a very, very important thing. For people to understand and to people to reproduce, we need to have a very simple language which they'll be able to understand, translate into their language and understand. How did you concentrate on the English? So, two things I should tell you at this juncture. One is the many students who send the initial feedback, they told me, Sir, as I as we read in the initial part, it is as, as if my professor is sitting in front of me asking that question. Okay. That is one part. That means they are the simple questions and answers. Secondly, if you look at my book, the the co-editor is my wife. Oh, really? She is uh -huh. Dr. Anita. She is okay. basically anesthetist. Uh -huh. But since you asked that question, um, I should admit that my English is not that good like my wife. Okay. Because it's a secret. <laughs> it's a secret. Right. It's, it's an open secret. Right. <laughs> she has got a very good English mm -hmm. and she has made it so simple. The language, you, you rightly use the word language. Many students were extremely happy with the with reading the book. I think I should thank my wife. In addition to this uh, editing the language and the whole book, 1300 pages book, word by word. <coughs> the other important thing is, she has contributed the basic chapters, fluids, mm -hmm. electrolytes, okay. being an anesthetist, they have the advantage, right. acid base balance, right. hemorrhagic shock okay. and uh, more importantly trauma. Right. There is a chapter in the blunt abdominal trauma. So, so these are the anesthesiology. So, these are the chapters contributed by her and she is the one responsible for this uh, making. I think uh, you should be very lucky to have your wife associated. <laughs> Otherwise, if wife is not associated, she will find you why you are spending all the time with the book and not with me. I think, uh, no, I no. think that is a very that, interesting uh, thing. That sacrifice uh, is always there. It is very important mm -hmm. to achieve uh, something, no? It is not easy. Because, uh, because the, what, what I have seen over a period of time is, by the time the first edition is now okay i have to prepare for the second time comes very fast mm -hmm. it's a continuous process mm -hmm. and after adding another two books like clinical book and uh, i have added dental book also oh, okay uh -huh. and i have made one uh, instrument book well, i saw that uh, uh, when i looking up uh, your uh, in instrument it's a instrument book is a multi author okay again uh, it's useful for the students right it has got instruments from the ent mm -hmm. ophthalmology obg orthopedic surgery mm -hmm. So, it becomes uh, very easy, mm -hmm. anesthesiology. So, if a seventh semester student takes it, he does not have to worry about the, uh, the, the instrument separate reading. Right. So, what I am trying to tell is now, by rotation, every year one book will come for the new edition. New edition. So, you are constantly on a daily basis, you spend some time on this? Uh, sometimes not, but otherwise, whenever time is there, we will put okay. it that way. Okay. Time is, you have to make the time, there is nothing. I will ask you an interesting question, sir. Now, you know your books by heart, not not just by heart, more than that because you know every sentence. Now, today you will be reading some journal or listening to something which is adding on information. So, you will think that I want to add this to my next edition. How do you record and keep it? What do you, are you techno savvy? Do you carry all the equipment to no, 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 copy no. it or uh, no, photograph no. and keep ready? No, the photographs as a part of that, yes, I have got a full collection of 
thousands thousands in my in my in my computer and uh, it's there in three four places so like that if it, because yeah. if i if i lose some matter, so yeah. so that is there that i have completely classified right. you start from the a to z mm. you start from adrenal means mm. it is there mm. b means like mm. and also in each one has got subheading right. breast means you know so many right. diseases are there right. so that part is very clear okay now the second part which you asked the question of new things to be added i maintain one diary Okay, okay. That's the best way I I realized. Uh-huh. I maintain one diary, okay. and I just whenever a new information comes, I'll go back and uh, note and make a make a note of no, that. But why are you not using uh, these electronic devices? Um, you are not into I, it. I'm not. I'm not uh, really into it. Mm-hmm. Just be honest with you. I'm not a laptop man. Really? <laughs> I'm a hard hard uh, you know the desktop man. desktop. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I I don't. No, uh, because re- I was wondering if Professor Shana I has to write so many books constantly. He'll be doing mm-hmm. something on his laptop uh, while traveling while. No, we'll put it that way. Once I decide, once I decide, mm-hmm. from that day, I'll be spending not two hours. It will be sometime three, four hours, five hours also. Mm-hmm. Uh, say. now now this is february let us say october i have to release uh, just for example this clinical book second edition right uh-huh. some feedback has already come which i have already noted in my diary okay uh-huh. the areas which need to need to improve right, right. so then uh, obviously i'll be working more right. so uh, i'm not a techy like of a person <laughs> no right mm-hmm. and um, how do you spend uh, time other than your teaching and uh, publishing what other uh, hobbies you have basically family comes hobby hobby uh, i'm a chess player really? and uh, chess uh, uh, you can call it as like uh, now i promote promote mm-hmm. uh, we have uh, uh, i'm the honorary president of united karnataka chess association oh wonderful ah, <laughs> that's a new uh, information sir. one uh-huh. and uh, but uh, again now spending time to play chess is difficult right so we do encourage lot of children to right. uh, come up in our district okay and in in the form of arranging uh, so okay. many chess tournaments uh, for the, for the children so we have produced lot of good players obviously not like vishnathan anandan etc but uh, and uh, yes listening to music uh, these are the few few things once in a while singing songs also So that's, <laughs> that's great, sir. Hobby. Hope I'll get to listen to them. And when there's a chance, uh, travel. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. My, I cannot say no to when somebody calls for the CMEs. Okay. Okay. Uh, that is the. I mean, the, uh, you're a born teacher, so uh, obviously. So so so. Enjoy so, doing like, that. Uh, because I I believe the knowledge should not stagnate. Number one. Second thing is there is a every day there is something to learn. you attend one cme whether it's a madure or in karnataka several places there is some new information you get from the people who are on the stage more so in the clinical side because clinical interpretation and the explanations are difficult to find in the books true it goes from actually word of mouth to very true right. uh, even even uh, today uh, a peripheral vascular disease patient uh, Uh, TAO patient is holding the foot, uh, and uh, the explanation for that why he is holding the foot, and uh, it's very difficult to get in any That's standard true. books. True, it should come from the experience of the teachers. Right. That is the advantage of the attending the CME right. to transfer the knowledge. Right. At the same time, we should not stagnate working in a medical college. Third is to acquire the knowledge from others. So now uh, there are. Um, Uh, if do you have to give some tips to the upcoming surgeons uh, to mould them into some sort of an author like you, uh, what we are talking be, about author. Yeah, we are not talking about their career guidance no, or no, something. No, no. See, career <laughs> guidance is one thing, sir. Because I mean, career career apart, you are an author. Right? That too, a uh, very accomplished author, and uh, you moulded so many. Now, uh, if I have to. become an author in due course of time how how is my learning how it should be different from routine the first thing for an author is firstly he should have that whatever expected knowledge of the subject right i have used the word expected 
because there is no end to say I want to get the best uh, perform. No, basic knowledge or what we can call as expected knowledge. Let us say one person has got. Next, building up. Building up is frequent referrals. Okay. Now next, you have decided to write a book. Next, you should be focused on to whom. Right. To whom you are writing a book. Because uh, again, there are many books in the whatever market. Like so many newspapers are there. Someone is interested will read uh, one news book, uh, one newspaper. Another will read Hindu. Another will read uh, Indian Express like that. Basic knowledge is important. Second thing is start working on that. Start working on the day one like that. Okay, I want to write a book for undergraduates or postgraduates. Next is you have to also should know does it become a valid valid in the sense does it postgraduate writing a book for a postgraduates if you ask me the question it, it is there is no end for it now next how to how will i write the book i need to have a knowledge i need to have experience and then documentation next is the important step is documentation documentation whatever in the form of whether it's a photographs or anything else next comes time time if you say i will do it tomorrow day after it will never happen it will never happen start every day one 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 page that is enough mm -hmm. that is what i also tell my colleagues is difficult to write one more book because as i have told the problems like this so i told my assistant okay take a one aspect of say complications only complications Day to day and night, we are seeing complications sure. of each surgery. Right. There is absolutely book will not go if you copy from standard textbooks and write complications. Everyone knows complications are given in all books. Right. Then what does what is matters for you is your experience. Right. You have encountered something that is what also I have put in this book right. in the form of clinical case capsules. Right. Like we have we discussed in the conferences, I have given them, I mentioned an example of appendicectomy. Right. I have given several examples of six, seven cases where uh, everyone has removed appendix and turned to something else. I think each one has. So, I think one should be focused, you should know what he is writing, to whom he is writing, is it valid, does it go well in the cinema and what extra things you can contribute in that other than just copying the book and putting it the words here and there and uh, that too with the now the copyright issues copyright issues are now more one right. should be extremely careful right. that's what i can say so it's wonderful uh, talking to you sir and uh, it's such a pleasure uh, seeing you and uh, exchanging views and i hope uh, you know some somebody will get inspired and i think <laughs> uh, i think with the volume of uh, the volume of a load which you people are having uh, in uh, wherever it's uh, here or anywhere um, something is there to, uh, with their experience, something you can contribute also, wonderful. Uh, I think uh, you also should write a book. Certainly. I suppose Thank you will you. write. Yeah. Uh, Thank you so much. Thanks. I would like to give my books to you. Yeah.